Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for intermediate algebra. This is section 1.7, part 2. We're going to look at the union of um, two sets. Now, in the previous section, we looked at intersections, which is where they overlap. And now we're going to look at the union of two sets, is what's in this set or this set, essentially all the values that can be found in one or the other. And that's why when we use this symbol, it means union, we interchange it with an or statement. A union means what's in one or the other. So if we look at this example, again, we're looking at linear inequalities here. If we have the set x such that x is less than negative 6, and we want to find the union of that value with the set of x such that x is greater than or equal to 1. So again, if we look at them individually, this says x is less than negative 6. So if this value is negative 6, any value less than that would be to the left. So we're going to use that parentheses because it does not include that value and anything to the left. So this is the graph of that set. If we look at this set, x such that x is greater than or equal to 1, if 1 is right here, x is greater than or equal to, so any value to the right, but it also includes that value. So we use a bracket here. The bracket indicates that it includes the endpoint. And any value to the right would be greater than that 1. So now if we put these two graphs together, we have negative 6 here with a parenthesis indicating the endpoint is not included. And here we have a bracket that indicates that the value is included. And we see they don't have an overlap. They go in opposite directions here. So if we're looking at the solutions for what solves this or this, if we're going to write this, we could not write it as a double inequality. If we tried, and let's just do that, we have negative 6 is uh, greater than x, because that's what this set statement says. If x is less than negative 6, negative 6 is greater than x. And this statement here says x is greater or equal to 1. If we look at this and we cover up any piece of it, this says negative 6 is greater than or equal to, negative, or to positive 1. A negative value is never greater than 1. That's not true. If I cover up this side, also not true. So a double inequality would not work for a union. It never works for a union. But what we can do is we can write it in interval notation. If we have these two values, this one goes from negative infinity to negative 6. Now, we use a parenthesis whenever we have an infinity, positive or negative, because we can't include an infinite number of items. And then we use that union symbol to write this in interval notation. Oh, excuse me. Since 1 is included, we use that same bracket that we use to graph to positive infinity. And because it's infinity, I use the parentheses. So we can graph it, or we can write it in interval notation. Here, it's already written in set notation. Set notation, graphical notation, interval notation for unions. All right. Let's take a look at an example here. We have 2x plus 3 is less than 6. And we want to join it with, or the union of negative 1 minus 3x is less than or equal to 8. So we're going to take these two separately. And we're going to solve this one first. I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. And then divide by 2. So we get x is less than 3 halves. Here we have. Uh, negative 1 minus 3x is less than or equal to 8. I'm going to add 1 to both sides. So I get negative 3x is less than or equal to 9. I'm going to divide by negative 3. And when I divide by a negative, signs are going to change. So if I divide this by negative 3, it becomes a positive 1x or just x. If I divide this by negative 3, it becomes negative 3. I notice I had a sign change on either side because of multiplication or division. So I'm going to change the sign because I divided by a negative. So we have x is greater than or equal to negative 3. So we have these two. If I were to write this in set notation, I would say x such that x is less than 3 halves. And because it's a union, I'd say or x such that x is greater than or equal to negative 3. So we have an or statement. Now, if I want to graph this, I have the value of negative 3. 
And I have the value of 3 halves. And obviously, negative 3 will be to the left, and 3 halves would be to the right. And if we look at this statement, x is less than 3 halves. And this statement says x is greater than or equal to negative 3, greater than or equal. It kind of looks like an intersection. Well, what this essentially says is that this goes this way to infinity, and this one goes this way to infinity. Here we have an example of where we get all real numbers. Any value will solve one or the other, because What's in either set, the values from here to positive infinity are in 1. Or we have 3 halves to negative infinity. That would be in the other. So we have to be careful sometimes and realize that we can have all real numbers for a solution. Any value I choose, either inside or outside, will solve one or the other. Let's look at an example. What if I pick a value over here, let's say negative 4. And I plug it in here. Negative 4 is less than 3 halves. Well, neg is negative 4 greater than negative 3 halves? No. It's not true in this one, but it is in this one. It solves one or the other, in this case, this one. If I choose a value in here, it's going to solve both of them. Let's say 0. 0 is in between negative 3 and 3 halves. So 0 is less than 3 halves, and 0 is greater than any negative number. So it's greater than negative 3. True statement for both of them. It solves one and the other in that case. But we just want to know, does it solve one or the other? If I choose a value out here, maybe I choose 2, because 2 is greater than 3 halves. Is 2 less than 3 halves? No. But 2 is definitely greater than negative 3. So it solves one or the other. It doesn't have to solve both. So we see if I choose something in any of these areas, it solves one or the other. So it is all real numbers, the entire number line. If we were to just graph that without the parentheses, we would just draw a parallel line. The solution is from negative infinity to positive infinity. All right, so we have set notation. We have the graphical notation. This would be proper. And we have interval notation. This is an example of all real solutions, or all real numbers. All right. This one here I'm going to leave for you to try on your own. It's similar to the first example. So go ahead and try this one. And uh, write your answer in set notation, graph it, and write it in interval notation. All right, we're going to look at an application problem of an intersection or an AND statement that maybe you'll uh, be able to utilize in your own class. Here we have Susie has scores of 80, 90, 82, and 75 on her intermediate algebra exams. Susie wants an overall average of a B, which requires an average of exam scores from 80 to 89. If the final exam is worth two exams, what score does Susie need on the final exam to get a B? So she wants a B in the class. So let's break this down when it comes to application problems. We read them, we read them, we read them. And then we try to build an equation from it and solve it and make sure that that solution makes sense. And maybe we have to read it again. So what we're, the key words that we're going to look at here is average. Hopefully, we recall how to find an average. We sum up the values and divide it by the number of values. Well, let's see what she has for exams. We know she has 80, 90, 82, and 75. 80, 90, 82, and 75. But then she has that final exam. And that's what we're asked to find. It says, uh, what score does she need on that final exam? Well, I'm going to underline this, because it says that the final exam is worth two exam scores. And that's our variable. So we're going to apply that. Now, to find the average of these, to find an average, we sum up the values and divide it by the number of numbers. Well, here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, because this is worth two exams. So we have six exams. So to find the average, we're going to sum this up and divide it by 6. Now, if we recall, from 80 to 89, this is our inequality. From 80, which means it can include that value, to 89, which means it's only going to go up to that value. It does not include it. 
So if we look at this, this would be our compound inequality. We can sum up these values, and we can solve this just as if it were a double inequality. What you do to one side, you do to all sides. So I'm going to stop right here and give you the opportunity to crunch these numbers, simplify this, and find out what x needs to be. What does her score need to be on that final exam? This has been section 1.7, part 2 of 3. Stay tuned for the next video. Thank you for watching.